So now we get into a very important section, getting a user's input. So far we've been just throwing out code and doing mathematics on the fly. But what happens if I want to have a little user interaction? You know, I, I'm writing a program, I want to be able to do something with it. So to do that, we introduce a few new things. Notice over here we got a lot of stuff going on here. The first thing is we include this idea of something known as an import statement. So I've blanked out our code and the import statement, where does it go? It actually goes in the very beginning. It actually goes outside of our public class welcome. It goes well beyond here. It actually comes outside and I go import java.util.scanner. So what did I just do? Well, I mentioned in class that everything in Java is known as an object. Everything in Java is an object. This, you know, thing, this, this program we've been writing, this is an object. So what I've done is I've actually pulled from another what's known as library. Uh, one thing that's really nice about programming languages, especially ones that have been around for a long time, is there's people better and smarter than you and me who've gone out there and built this stuff for us. Someone's already gone out and built this, built this, this scanner class so that I now have an input. I now have a way to communicate to my user and get an input from them. So now what do I do? Well, now that I've done my import, I need to go back into my main method because this is where I have to make initialize, initialize, nice little five dollar word there, initialize, create my scanner class. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'll follow along with what I have on the slides. I'm gonna call it scanner. Now, one thing I've mentioned in the past is that scanner with the capital S and scanner with the lower case, case S, those are two separate things. Java is case sensitive, so capital scanner versus lowercase scanner, those are two completely different things. If you don't like scanner, and okay, why not? I'm gonna call it input. Doesn't matter which way you call it. Remember, the variable is just our way of referring to it somewhere in memory. So if I say scanner input equals, remember I have to do that equals, as it's the assignment operator. I've now made a place in memory for input. This is where things get a little weird because I'm now initializing an instance of an object. What? Initialization of an object, just as my way of saying, because scanner is not something simple like a number or a string, I have to go and create it a different way. I have to say that I wanna make a new scanner of system.in. Now, I said system.in because if we remember how I print a statement to the user, I say system.out. So that's my way of doing output from the user. How do I get input to the user? System.in. So it's just an inverse going on there. So now that I've done that, now that I have this created, I actually can now interact with my user. How? Well, the first thing you do is, if you notice, I actually prompt the user up first. I don't just immediately say, you know, I don't just immediately do this next line, and I'll even move this up so we can kind of take a look at it. I don't immediately do uh, scanner.nextLine. I don't do that because that's, they're not gonna know what to type, really. The users are dumb. They're really dumb people. Uh, they don't know what to do unless you streamline their stuff. If you take a look at our Blackboard page, guess what? I streamline it for you guys. I'm not saying you're dumb. I'm just saying it helps you know where to go. <laughs> so the first thing I'm saying is make sure to prompt your user, system.out.print. And I say print. That way it happens on the same line. Just a stylistic choice in my opinion. But instead of enter a number, I'm actually going to say enter a name. I'm going to just change it a little bit because why not? You already see it on the slides. Let's see an application of it. Enter a name. Now I do put a space in there because remember, computer is very dumb. It doesn't know to put the space there. So there we are. 
I've said enter a name. Now, now that I've prompted the user, I can type something. And let's just take a look at something for a second. If I compile this, I'm not going to get anything, but just so we can double check. We've been typing a lot, so I want to make sure everything works. Excellent, everything does work. If you did not get everything working right now, maybe take a second, pause the video, see if you can kind of debug your code. So now that I've written everything out and it's working perfectly fine, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a data type known as a string. Remember in class we said that if I need to represent text, just simple text, like the inner a name sentence that I have there, it's stored as a string. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this, instead of input, since I already use input, I know, a little confusing, I'm gonna call it name, string name. So in that point, it's time for me to now make my string. To do that, I have to use something called next line. Now next line, what next line does is it basically is gonna wait for my user to give it an input and then it's gonna hit enter. So in our case, I'm gonna go ahead and wait for my user to hit enter. But I have to tell it from where? From my scanner, from that. Notice how they're both highlighted. It's because I'm referring back to my scanner object, that thing I made earlier, dot next line. So now what happens is my program will hang until I hit enter. And everything that I type up until that point will get stored in the variable name. So then we'll just kind of finish things off with a system.out.println hello. Oh, make sure to include your space if you're doing string concatenation, which we are doing, plus name. Now what this will do again, take a moment, go ahead, run it, see what happens. So now that you've run it, so as we kind of take a look at this, what we're gonna see happen, we compile it. Excellent, ran, perfectly fine. When we say welcome.java, or welcome Java, Java welcome, <laughs> is boom, enter a name. It stops and it pauses. The program's not gonna run any further until I hit the enter key. So whatever I type in here, such as my name, and then as soon as I hit enter, not only does the program output hello Adam, hello Adam, but then it closes itself because that's the end of the program. Notice how nothing left to do but shut down. Again, this is gonna be whatever I give it. So if I say enter a name, and then I just give it a bunch of numbers, Hello, four, five, six, one, two, three, six, nine, seven. I mean, it'll do whatever you tell it to, but it's gonna store it as a string. What happens if I wanna turn it into a number? Well, instead of using a next line, we actually have something else. We have something called a next int. We actually have a few of these. But instead of a string, I'm gonna say, let's change it to an integer. And instead of next line, I say next int. Next int is now going to take whatever I say and put it in there. Well, I'm going to do a few other tweaks as well, just because I'm dealing with a number, so I'm clearly showing, uh, you know, math this time around. I'm going to I'm going to call this uh, inner a number. Why not? We'll call our variable number. And instead of doing hello plus number, I just want to go ahead and say number times two. We'll just say I want to see what the number is times two. So now that I've saved it and I compile it, everything worked out perfectly fine. Go ahead and take a look at this, see what happens. In our case, as soon as we do, we get enter a number. All right, well, we've prompted the user again, so I can type in a number. Don't type anything big. Remember, integers are a little too, you know, they have a finite size to them. So I'm just going to say one, two, three. As soon as I hit enter, 
you see that I get 246. You know what, I, let's actually take a look at that for a second. Let's see what happens when I go larger than 2.14 billion. Because remember, that's 2.14, some change, is the cap of how big an integer can be. So what happens if I go, that's a 3,000, that's 3 million, 3 billion. What happens if I hit enter here? Take a pause, see what happens, see if you're right. Oh, look at that, we actually crashed it. Why? Because we tried to throw too big of a number to it. So we literally stated, give me a number, and we gave it something that's not really that uh, too big. We broke the program. <sighs> so we have to be careful about this kind of stuff. So in that case, instead of doing something like an integer, we can actually make it something like a long. Now, I still have to change this. Instead of a next int, I would say I want to get the next long from my scanner. Now we do the exact same thing. We compile it, ran perfect. Well, it compiled perfectly fine. One, two, three, thousand, million, billion. Notice how it didn't crash that time. That's because longs, unlike integers, are 64-bit long, and that means they have a little bit more control over what they can store. Really large numbers. So. While we do have a little bit of uh, being able to now interact with the user, we have to be a little bit of careful with the user. That's actually why we prompt it, is to make sure that the user doesn't do anything too scary.